Welcome everyone to this month's edition of the Insider's Report, a new way to tour Flat Top Manor. And Jordan Calloway is going to give us a behind the scenes look inside the manor house, which is often unseen, especially this time of the year. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us this morning. So let's get right to it. If this is your first time visiting Flat Top Manor or your 50th, I promise you will learn something new today. So like most things in the past year, the pandemic has limited access to areas of Flat Top Manor. So we wanted to find ways to expand visitor access to the home. So the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation through supporters like you have made this exciting new opportunity possible. So this is a way for us to provide access to visitors who would perhaps not be able to schedule a tour, who would perhaps not be able to access certain areas of the home as there is no elevator. So this is part of multiple levels that the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation has done to expand the research on the home, to expand the appreciation of Flat Top Manor, the circa 1901 home of Moses and Bertha Cohn. So we have uh, funded projects such as commissioning a play on the creation of the home. Um, I curated an exhibit at uh, Brahm uh, on Flat Top Manor. We have uh, funded further research on Flat Top Manor and there's just so much to be learned. So I'm excited to share this with you. So when you go through Flat Top Manor, if you've had the opportunity to visit in person before, you probably realize there's not much in there. It's basically an empty home. And this is because Bertha Cohn gave away everything in her house. So we are recreating and filling the house with information. So in the Matterport 3D tour, there's something called Matter Tags. And these basically serve as exhibit panels. So when you go through the home on your own at your leisure, there is Lot, a lot of information for you to explore. There's over 100 tags on the first floor only, and there are multiple tags on the second and third floors. And these tags are color-coded. So, for instance, when you go through, say your interest is really the outdoors and the outdoor spaces. So you may look for these forest green tags that refer to the landscape features outside the house. If architecture is your interest, you might go to mint green. Also to facilitate access to the home for school children, as there's currently an issue with buses being able to access and have safe parking on site. And of course, many of our school, school children are learning remotely at this time. Um, I have implemented some of the North Carolina social studies standards and those are yellow tags. So I'm going to jump right in and share this with you right now. Hopefully you are viewing my Matterport screen at this time and you're, you join me on the porch of Flat Top Manor. Nope, <clears throat> we can't see the porch of Flat Top Manor yet, Jordan. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, let me make sure that that is possible for you because I certainly wanna take you there. Are you with me now? Absolutely. Wonderful. Wonderful. So the porch of Flat Top Manor, which was originally referred to as the piazza in the blueprint for Flat Top Manor, is quite a beautiful spot. And you can certainly understand why Moses and Bertha Cohn situated their home on this location to take full advantage of the amazing views on site. But the purpose of this tour today is to explore the interior of Flat Top Manor. So while you're going through this tour, you can do this as I am with a mouse and on a laptop. You can take the tour on a phone, on an iPad. Uh, you have a variety of devices you can use. So if you were visiting Flat Top Manor in the day of Moses and Bertha Cohn, you would have been greeted by a very different space than we see today. When Moses and Bertha Cohn inhabited the home, this main front hall was actually painted a salmon pink color. This was a very elegantly decorated home. This was filled with worldly objects that they had collected on their travels with Moses' sisters, Etta and Clarabelle. 
It had gleaming surfaces. There were maple wood floors. You can't appreciate those now with the industrial carpeting, but beautiful wood floors and covered by Turkish rugs. So it was a very sophisticated and elegant space that stood in stark contrast to the Appalachian Mountains and the region that they were in. So as I mentioned earlier, these matter tags are color coded. So if you are interested in watching a video or listening to a song while you go through the home, this one, for example, shows you one of our earlier webinars, then you might look for the orange color coded tags. So if you were an especially invited guest of Moses and Bertha Cohn, and they did have some very special guests enter these doors, such as the governor of North Carolina, the secretary of the United States Navy, uh, Etta brought her friend Gertrude Stein to Flat Top Manor, you may have heard of her, then you would have come through this formally decorated space and you would have entered what is known on the floor plans, as I'm showing you now, as the reception room. So you would enter this public space in the main hall and then you would enter the reception room. And it serves essentially as a parlor. So it has been referred to as a parlor on uh, surviving documents. It was also called the music room because this is where they kept their Steinway. So one reason we were able to, a silver lining of the pandemic is whenever the park partners such as Eastern National and the Crafts Guild were not using the space early last summer, we were able to film these. So you do see some of the materials that they use for the Crafts Guild, but you are able to really zoom in and see some of these architectural details that you would not normally be able to see if you were visiting whenever it was fully furnished. So I hope you take advantage of the opportunity to study all of these. This space would have originally been painted a light blue gray, and it was a very formally decorated space, French furniture, um, and it looks obviously very different than it does now. So another space that you may have visited with Mrs. Cohn in whenever you first went to Flat Top Manor was the library. So I'm going to take you into the library now. So the library obviously looked very different in that time too. It's ironic that it's now used as a bookstore for uh, Eastern National as this was a space where they had books and you may not, all, may not realize that there are built-in bookshelves along all of the walls here. And this space would have looked very different. It was painted a light terracotta color. And this is the room where they housed their Picasso that they were able to receive thanks to the fact that Moses's sisters, Etta and Clarabelle were two of the earliest collectors of Pablo Picasso's works. So I do want to point out, this is an opportunity for you to zero in on some of those architectural details and see some of these hidden elements that you would not ordinarily see when you visit Flat Top Manor. There is a set of pocket doors behind here that allowed access to the dining room. And when you open each of these tags, you're able to scroll down and see more information. And I'm gonna give you a shortcut to access another one of these public formal spaces in the house, the dining room. So in recent years, the dining room has served as a small theater where the park can welcome guests and show them an introductory video on the house. And so we didn't want you to miss out on that opportunity. And so when you visit the house virtually, you also can enjoy this short film that was created by the faculty of Appalachian State University. And you can feel like you are physically in the home too and being greeted. This obviously was decorated in a very different way in Moses and Bertha Cohn's day, no carpeting, wood flooring. I also wanted to show you if you did have an opportunity to see the exhibit that we held at Brahm in 2019, the Chinese tray that Bertha Cohn acquired on her international trip was always displayed in the dining room. And so this is one place that it's been identified as being. So this would be a public space. This would be a space that their invited guests would access. 
their invited guests would not be invited into the service areas of the home, which is where we're going next. So this is the butler's pantry. This is, uh, these are obviously modern day rugs, but this is a space of sanitation. This is a space where the meals were plated. And this was sort of a um, transition area between the kitchen and the dining room. There's also a storeroom back here where you can see Bertha Cohn would have to shop for the entire season. She was able to use the resources on the estate, the fruits and vegetables that they grew on the estate, but there were of course dry goods that she would need to purchase for the very long season that they resided at Flat Top Manor and also uh, to be able to feed the many guests that they had. So here's another area that you, you may note is in stark contrast to the painted wood surfaces that we've seen in the more formal areas of the house. So this is an area that was the domain of the domestic staff at Flat Top Manor. And the domestic servants at Flat Top Manor were, were primarily black men and women. They came from Baltimore, perhaps from Greensboro. They came and lived and worked for the season. So you can imagine what this would have, what this would experience would have been like in the early 1900s to be some of the few African Americans living in the mountains. They did have uh, cottages behind Flat Top Manor. She kept a relatively small house staff, probably a larger staff in the years that Mr. Cohn was alive and the times that they were able to spend there together. And some of these doors are shut and you can't access them. This would have been the dining hall for the kitchen staff. <clears throat> this takes you to the basement. I don't have photos of the basement to share with you, but I promise you, you're not missing a lot. Um, there was an area for storing meat in the basement as well as a wine cellar. Uh, Bertha was not a drinker. Moses mainly drank in social situations. So it was probably uh, for the advantage of their guests for them to have those. So let's go to another area of the house. And these are, as I said, primarily public formal spaces. So let's go to some of the more private spaces. So who would have been invited to go upstairs at Flat Top Manor? This would be overnight guests. This would be family members. We're gonna take a shortcut and get to the upstairs. So this is where they spent the bulk of their time. This was their sitting area. This is the area where they could sit and read and play cards. Uh, bridge was an extremely popular activity for the Cohn and Lindau families. This is a chance for you to appreciate these spaces because a second floor tour for the first 50 years that Flat Top Manor was open to the public, <clears throat> guests could not access the second floor. It was in 2003 that, that the National Park Service started offering these tours. They're by appointment only, it's small groups only for visitor safety, and they were not available in 2020. Uh, it's yet to be seen if they'll be available in 2021. So this is truly an exciting opportunity for you to visit these spaces that you cannot normally access. So I'm going to take you in a few more private spaces on this floor. And at the end of the hall is the master bedroom. So they, surely selected this space because of the beautiful views that it provides. And you're able to appreciate these views too. I'm using my mouse to scroll in so you can see these items. So this bedroom would have been Moses and Bertha Cohn's bedroom. After Moses Cohn died, she shared this space with her sister, Clem. So I'm going to take you into Mrs. Cohn's bathroom now. And this is an opportunity for you to really zero in and look at some of these details. Now, when people think of Bertha Cohn, they think of her as how she identified herself, a woman alone managing this estate after her husband's early death. So she lived almost 40 years of her life as a widow. So you may associate her with her black and white wardrobe, but at Based on the surviving records, I think she preferred a more colorful palette. You may not be able to make it out, but this is a very delicate pink, this course of tile here. We know that she had pink and red rugs throughout the house, 
And of course, we know that she had the salmon pink walls downstairs. So several of the bathrooms at Flat Top Manor feature a shower. But as far as we know, that was not their preferred method. They preferred baths. And the Lindau nieces, who were Mrs. Cohn's great nieces, who we heavily depend on the oral history interviews with both of them, and we're so appreciative of their assistance. They told us that it was sort of an oddity to have those and that no one actually used the showers. So while we're in Mrs. Cohn's private space, I wanted to show you this lovely detail that you may not ever notice, but there's this beautiful small round window here that really I think of as for Moses and Bertha Cohn's own personal enjoyment. This is in their closet. So it, it, it's certainly visible from the outside, but you have to think this was just something they did for themselves to add that element. So I'm gonna take you back out. And we're gonna go down this hallway which is more of a um, private service oriented space. I'm going to show you from overhead, the main more grand staircase would have been for their public invited guests. And then this back stair was more likely to be used by their staff. Say if one of their foremen needed to deliver something upstairs, they might use this back stairwell. Um, Miss Nellie Snow, who was the nursemaid that cared for the Lindau nieces, she would bring their meals up this back stairs so they could eat in that hallway. So this stairwell and this hallway, which you may notice is less um, ostentatiously decorated, um, leads you to the attic. And this is definitely a space that you would not have access to for safety reasons. So I'm gonna give you a shortcut to get you upstairs to the attic. So now we're in the attic of Flat Top Manor. And this is obviously decorated in a very different way. This is a utilitarian space. I find the horizontal beadboard to be attractive myself. It's dominated by the angles from the roof line of Flat Top Manor. And the Lindau nieces said that they enjoyed hiding away in this space. It was a space that they could make their own. They would sit up here and read. It was a very cool, quiet space for them to spend time in. So this space was not only used for that type of purpose, but the same purpose that you and I use for our attic now for storage. So the Cones had an extensive collection of luggage thanks to their around the world travels and their frequent tri trips to New York and Greensboro so they could store their luggage up here. Apparently they also stored soap up here because one of the Lindau nieces said it always smelled like ivory soap when she entered this space. Another use of the attic space as it is a very large area was it provided additional sleeping quarters when they had a large amount of family visiting, perhaps the children may have stayed up here, perhaps uh, servants of their visiting guests may have stayed up here, and they also used it for their own servants. So we do know that in the 1930s, when the Lindau sisters would visit, when they brought their nursemaid with them, Miss Nellie, this was her bathroom, and then next door was her bedroom. And there really is such beautiful light that manages to come through these windows. We do know that she kept her sewing table right under this window. And that is how the sisters remember this space being used. So I hope you can appreciate that not only do you get a sneak peek on this tour, but it expands your access. So you are not inhibited by the need to go on stairs. You're not inhibited by your geographic location. Uh, for example, if we have a classroom in Greensboro that's studying the Cohn family's contributions to Greensboro, they would be able to visit this from their classroom. So I want to take you to one location that you definitely will not be visiting. And just a tip, if you're using a keyboard, you can press the letter I to scroll up on and see a higher view. So this is the access to the widow's walk. 
This is not open to the public for safety reasons. When we came and photographed the house for the before photos that we're using for the major exterior renovations that Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation supporters are making possible, I went up on the widow's walk with my colleague, Kevin Brandt, and I can tell you that this door up here is extremely heavy. We had a very hard time between the two of us maneuvering and lifting this door. So this is a, a real treat that you're gonna be able to go up on the widow's walk yourself. And unfortunately you can see the damage that, that is visible around the house is obviously affecting the widow's walk area. This is thankfully something that we are addressing at this time. So you can appreciate what this experience would have been like. I do have a tag that will take you to another spot off here in the distance where you can see a bit better to appreciate the beauty that is the Cone Estate. It was close to 3,600 acres that Moses and Bertha Cone stitched together over close to 50 real estate transactions. And now all of this is part of the National Park Service and is something that belongs to all of us. And so I hope that through using this tour, you can appreciate Flattop Manor, you can appreciate all the work that went into the home, the work that was done by the domestic staff, the work that was done by the tenant uh, families that lived on the estate. There were about 30 tenant family homes on the estate. And I'm gonna take you back to where we started on the front porch to see if you have any questions at this time. Please take your time and visit this tour on your own and thoroughly explore. There are multiple links. There's multiple videos where you can appreciate all of the work that went into this home and gain an appreciation for what life was like for the people of Flat Top Manor. Jordan, thank you so much <clears throat> for giving us a behind the scenes tour of Flat Top Manor. Um, it is really amazing. The catwalk, I will say, is uh, with a little bit of fear of heights. It was a little interesting uh, to be up there myself, um, but quite an experience and an opportunity for all of us to be able to see that. So thank you. We've had lots of questions. I'm going to ask a few while we have some time allowed. And uh, for those of you that we don't get to your question, when you receive the email uh, with the link to the video, we will try to answer as many of those additional questions as we can. So one of the first questions has to do with uh, how I can experience this. So I know that uh, the, the individual that asked this question said, you know, they know they're going to get a link to this video, this webinar, and that we'll have it on our YouTube channel for people to be able to see. But how can I access the Matterport uh, experience that you just did so I can go through and click on the tags that I want to learn about? Sure. So we have this on our website. Um, you can visit brpfoundation.org to access the tour. We are working with the National Park Service to expand the information on the tour. Um, we would like to have some additional videos from them. And we will also have this webinar on our YouTube channel, of course. So there's lots of opportunities. And also, it's a living document. Um, this is a document that I can continue to add to and edit. So the more we learn about the house, the more we can input that information. So you may view the tour one week and then come back a week later and there's more information. Fabulous. Uh, when was the house built and do we have any idea how much it cost? I know they went over budget. <laughs> uh, I know that they um, used a contractor from North Carolina uh, named William Fries. And the architect, of course, was Orlo Epps, who worked in the Greensboro area and then D.C. before relocating to New York. And um, I can't give you an exact number on the budget, but um, it was finished by 1901. It took them about two years altogether to finish building the estate. So, 
All right, fabulous, thank you. And then uh, someone asked, are the wood floors under the carpet still in good shape? Are they, are they still there? They're still there. I couldn't tell you about the exact condition. There are some parts of the house where you may have noticed whenever you were visiting the tour that you can still see the original floor. I believe you can see it in uh, Mrs. Cohn's closet um, and of course the attic spaces. Um, <clears throat> so that would be something if we do work further on the interior to improve the interior, we could certainly see that then. Um, I did notice, Carolyn, I had a chance to glance at some of those Q&As that one person asked about the carriage trails and the amazing hiking that is available on site. And definitely, um, I have worked on the tour to integrate the exterior and the interior. For example, when you're in the dining room, there's a picture of the fire tower, and you can click on that link, and you go on the hike to the fire tower, and that's a National Park Service tour. So you may be across the country, but you can take that hike with us virtually. Fabulous. And someone asked about the relationship between the Park Service and the Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation. We're the nonprofit fundraising partner. So because of all of the folks that are part of our community of stewards and who have donated and helped support our work, we're able to fund projects and programs that otherwise wouldn't be funded, like the work on the renovations of the exterior of the Manor House that's going to cost about $3 million dollars and work on this tour uh, that Jordan helped put together. And somebody asked, how long did it take you to create this virtual tour? It took me quite a while. And that's one reason why we, that's another way we partner with the Park Service is to, to provide that extra time, that extra capability. I have a background in museums and museum interpretation. I can tell you that I much prefer this type of tour over leading an hour and a half long scheduled tour on your feet. So. This, I did put quite a bit of time into it, but I hope that it makes it all worth it and that it makes people appreciate Flat Top Manor even more. Fabulous. Um, and I think we have time for one more question. Uh, someone asked uh, when the renovations to the exterior will be completed. So we did start those in December, which is amazing to think that we started uh, work on a mountain home in December, but much of that is being accomplished off-site. And I do have some links on the tour to show you some of the before videos. We do have a lot of that information in our webinar that Kevin Brandt presented on the exterior renovations. And Carolyn, to my knowledge, they'll continue through next season. And so this tour will be critical if your access, we're hoping to not impede access at all to the home. But if it does happen to be, then you have the opportunity to visit the inside of the house virtually. Fabulous. Well, Jordan, thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for joining us on this month's edition of the Insiders Report. And again, you'll be receiving a link for this webinar, but you can go on our website now at brpfoundation.org and you can take a Matterport tour yourself and experience and read and enjoy some of the hidden gems that are found in and around the Moses Cone Flat Top Manor. So thanks everyone, y'all have a great day. We'll see you later, bye.